looking at that gap there, I think it will fit, but we will see the new car for the channel. You can see that it's leaning very much to the front. So I feel like I'm in a movie or something with this wind coming through anyway. It's game time. Welcome back guys to another day in the scrapyard and today is a special episode. I'm at Copart Rochford and I'm showing you how we load our 10 car transporter from start to finish in the auction sites. So thank you to Copart Rochford for letting me in and kindly letting me film today. Last week I announced I was going to be buying something for the channel to rebuild. I haven't actually decided what I'm going to do yet but there were some crazy suggestions. An ice cream van, a buggy, I've had a motorbike so we were, I'm, I'm looking at all the comments now and trying to work out but the ice cream van is where I'm thinking I think that'll be quite funny for the summer. But as you can tell it's really windy so sorry about my barn it probably looks terrible right now. Over here are the 10 cars that we're going to be loading. We've actually got 10 large cars so I'm not sure whether we're going to get them all on but that's not the end of the world because we're coming back here later I won't be filming. Um, we're going to start at the top deck and then work our way down get the lorry loaded up and then later on hopefully I'm going to reveal to you the new supercar which I'm going to be buying later on next week so it's going to be a crazy video and stick around for the finish because it's a big ending so guys I don't know if you knew but our lorry has actually been extended so it can fit 10 cars on it because usually a lorry of that size is actually an 8 car transport so we put the extensions on the top deck as you can see over there um, so to load this lorry you have to think about what order you're putting the cars on so we're going to start on the top deck and what car are we going for first? Uh, yeah, 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 it's got, it's got to be Honda HRV. Oh, so HRV. the Honda HRV is going on first. So, guys, I thought it'd be a good time to quickly say hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and put your post notifications on because I've got three videos coming out this week. So, you don't want to miss any of them because they're going to be as good as each other. Here comes Tony in the first car that we're going to be loading on. Each car on this lorry has to be facing forward because the way that we've designed it caters for all the cars to be facing forward. So the plan is to get four on the top deck, four on the middle deck and two on the bottom deck. So the way you do it is you put two bigger cars on each end, two smaller cars in the middle and try and sandwich them down that way. And then on the bottom deck you try and put the flatter cars, so for example that BMW over there, that will go on the bottom deck because it's a little bit lower and it will fit under there when the middle deck comes down on top of it. So that's how Tony plans to load the lorries when he sees the cars. So it's important that he communicates with the auction sites so that they put out cars that will fit on the lorry. Otherwise, you'd end up only being able to put eight on it, which isn't cost effective when you're trying to run to an auction site twice a day. trying to load the top deck it's important to try and have a car that runs that you can slide up to the end because otherwise you'll have a nightmare and spend a ridiculous amount of time trying to get it with the forklift to that end. So next to go on is the KA over there. So Tony's now just loosening the straps ready to strap the car down. When you when you go underneath the car what do you look for to, to hook the hook? Uh, uh, hook the you know my strongest beats like a beach ball and stuff like yeah. that so I'll make sure it's yeah, so he looks for the strongest part of the car that he can see, obviously it's dependent on the car, like the wishbone or part of the chassis or something that he can hook around and securely lock it down. And then making sure that the ratchet is done tight as possible so there is no give in the car whatsoever. So it's important for when Tony brings the cars back to try and not damage as much as possible. Um, so 
when loading, it is important for him to keep the front ends for export or to look after the headlights if we're going to try and resell them on other wing mirrors, for example. But occasionally, we do pick up cars like that Micro over there, which is badly damaged, and it doesn't really matter where he puts it on the lorry. And it's good to have a couple of cars like that on the load, so you can just sort of make up some space, just crunch them down a little bit, and it doesn't matter if they get damaged. Now we've got two cars on the top deck, it's easy for him to load the third car because he can go in sideways and just lift it up like a normal like a normal one. He doesn't have to uh, push it down there with the forks and Tony doesn't have to jump in it. So it's much easier to load now you've got the first two on the top deck. When we load the top deck, we strap the first car down, get it securely in place. But in the next two cars, we don't strap down until we see the amount of space that we've got to put the last one in. Because sometimes you need to push the cars up a little bit and have a little bit of readjusting before you strap them down. So you just be unstrapping them and restrapping them all the time. So obviously it's time effective not to strap them down in the first place and to wait until you're trying to load the last car on the top deck. Um, the last car on the top deck is going to be this blue BMW because we're going to go for another big car. And looking at that gap there, I think it will fit, but. We will see in a second if it does. It's game time. The question is, guys, is it going to fit? I don't know. I think the forks on this forklift might just be long enough, but you can see that it's leaning very much to the front. So it's going to be tight, guys. It's going to be tight. Tony's just lowering the top deck so that it makes it easier for the forklift driver to lift the uh, BM on there because obviously it's half and half on like that. I'm going to lift the top deck back up and catch the wheels at a parallel position in the hooks at the bottom. Oh. Smashed it guys, we knew it was gonna fit. Tony's the man, and he? Tony is the man. Let's get these strapped down and let's crack the middle deck and the bottom deck. So there's two straps to the front one for extra safety. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Because if you have to emergency, have to do emergency stuff or there, make sure you not smash your cap. Right, okay. So on the last car, we actually have two straps on each wheel, and this is because if you need to emergency stop, you need resistance on both sides, so the car doesn't smash forward, and then you don't want the car smashing back the other way. So it's important that the rear car and the front car on the top deck are strapped down correctly. Otherwise, you'll have big problems. You'll have cars falling off on the motorway. You'll have cars coming off on the roundabouts. And we don't want that, do we? Because we need to get these back safe and uh, earn some money out of them. I tell you what, I wouldn't mind a couple of them on the back of my lorry. I reckon they're worth a few quid. Can somebody in the comments tell me what they are? Because I have no idea. I think they're a little bit before my time, I'm not too sure. But you've got a convertible and you've got a soft top, so you've got a collection there. One for the summer, one for the winter. You can imagine me in my nice suit with a cigar on, coming out the house, jumping in one of them and just nice little 20 mile an hour down the road because I don't reckon you get much more out of them than 20 mile an hour. What do you guys reckon? You've got the top deck rear, you've got the middle deck rear, the middle deck front and the top deck front. So at the minute, all I've got to do is raise the top deck to the highest point possible so you've got as much room to access the middle deck. Let's do that. All you do is pull these two levers back at the same time and allow the deck to lift. Three hours later. Any time today. <laughs> Three hours later, she finally got to the top. Uh, we're gonna start going on the middle deck now. So we're gonna put that goal right to the front. 
Next on is the mangled Micra, which I did think was going to be the next car on, but I didn't want to say anything in case I got it wrong. Recycle, repeat. I've had a few of you in the comments asking me for uh, a list of cars that we're breaking, what parts I'm taking off. At the minute, I'll let you guys know, we don't currently offer a parts service, but it will be coming on later this year. So stay tuned and stay posted because I will announce it in one of these videos. But for example, what I will do is something like this. I'll go, so guys, here are the cars which I'll be breaking and then slowly show you through every car and then I'll give you an opportunity, maybe a week or two weeks, to message me directly or the company and let me know what bits you want off them and then we can work it out like that. But at the minute, we don't currently offer a part service so any more comments, I'm, unfortunately, won't be answering because we don't do that service. So I thought I'd let you guys know we've got a special video coming Saturday which is going to be a tug of war competition between two cars in the yard. I'm actually eyeing up this little KA here because I think that'll be a steady contender against maybe a Corsa or a Fiesta, so let's see how it goes. The reason that this last car is actually facing the other way is because the distance from the rear wheels to the boot is actually shorter from the front wheel to the end of the front bumper. So we've decided to turn it round in order to fit the car on, it has to be facing backwards. In case any of you guys were wondering, because I did say at the start that every car was facing forward. Impact in three, two, one, bang. Oh no guys, he's damaging my KA for the tug of war. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Uh. And as you can see there, we've got about three or four inches to play with at the front. So if the car was spun the other way around, there was no way that would have fitted on. So great thinking from the lorry driver, Tony. He's at it again. Genius, mate. He's a genius. Oh, I feel like I'm in a movie or something, this wind coming through anyway. Um, Tony's just told me that if the front car is too far forward, sometimes the straps don't reach. So what he does is he gets a ratchet strap off, one of the spare ones off the back, and that's actually manually hooks it onto the wheel and hooks it onto the deck and then tightens it up like that. Quite interesting because when you're out driving, you have to adapt to the situation because not everything's as easy. So it's good to see that we've got a driver who's thinking ahead on the front foot all the time, sorting the problems out. Because the last thing that you want is a lorry driver that's calling you up all the time, asking you what he needs to do and how to do it. So it's great to see. Cracking on with the last deck now, driving the car to the front, and then we've obviously got the last car to go on now, which is the BMW. And she's on. 10 cars on the 10 car transporter. Well done, Tony. Well done, Copa, for sorting that out. We'll get the last two strapped on, and then I will show you guys the new car for the channel. Uh, Tony's coming back down here later to get another load. We've, I think we've got about 26 or 27 cars down here, so we're gonna have to come back again later this week to pick up the cars. Because at Copart, after four days, you do get charged with storage. So if any of you guys are buying something from Copart, remember that after the first day, you've got four days of free storage, and then it's five pound a day, which actually increases. So, And that does apply over the weekend, just to let you know. It's very important that on the cars on the back, you get the registrations off, because if you go through any cameras or any checks, you might actually end up getting uh, Dartford crossings for these free cars, which isn't ideal. So if you are bringing a car back across the bridge and it's on the back of your deck, if you don't already know, make sure you get the registration plates off or you could be hit with some hefty fines and even a speeding ticket, depending on how fast your driver's going. The new project car for the channel is, I'm not gonna tell you that easily, 
I'm going to keep the information to myself just for the next week so that nobody gets any ideas in the auction and tries to bid against me so I can't buy it because I really want this car. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it sounds like and then I want you to guess in the comments what you think it is. So listen to this. <laughs> end of today's episode Tony is now back on his way to the yard it's been a pleasure coming down to Copart and filming loading the 10 car transport so I hope you guys enjoyed that little insight put in the comments as well what you'd like to see in the next videos I'm trying to incorporate as much of what you guys want to see as possible and until next time peace out